Hey, before the video starts, I wanted to do an announcement about the giveaway. Feel free to skip to the time on screen if you're not interested in winning GP. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah or Yule or whatever you celebrate or don't celebrate. It's the season of giving and I wanted to give back to my community for watching my videos. Thank you all. I mean, it's not my GP because a friend gave me GP to give away. I was going to donate 5 mil to the giveaway and have it be open for anyone to donate any amount they want. But my friend Rosalina donated 100 mil and I thought that's just such a nice clean number, why should I keep my 5 mil in the prize pool? I'll just be giving the extra 5 mil away to some stranger in free to play or something instead. So if you want a chance to win a portion of the 100 mil prize pool, there are two separate giveaway contests going on right now. I'm not completely sure how exactly to split up all the GP between winners but I would like to make sure each person who gets a prize gets at least 6 mil since that's about the price of a bond. That way it's more fair if an Iron Man wants to participate so they can be given a bond if they don't have an alt account I could trade GP to. I can cover the cost of converting the bond in that case, it's not that expensive. So what are the two giveaways? I've done several Fashionscape competitions in the past in my Discord server and they're always really fun so I thought I would do that again for Christmas. All of the rules and details are in my server and if you want to participate you'll have to join my server and read through this channel, but it's pretty simple. This contest started on December 1st and goes until the very end of December to allow everyone a chance to create an outfit to submit. So I'll be giving out the prizes for this contest on January 1st or 2nd, depending on how hungover I am on New Year's. But I figured not everyone is interested in Fashionscape, so I wanted to host a separate giveaway. This one is Hide and Seek. All of the details will be in a post on my YouTube community tab, but you can also read it on my Twitter or in my Discord server. You've probably seen people play hide and seek in streams or at least on Gilinor games, but in case you don't know how it works, I post a picture of a location like this and you have to guess where it is. Normally I would be hiding in game, but I wanted this to be accessible to everyone even if you're not a member, just as long as you have enough knowledge of the game. So as an example, I could post a picture like this really zoomed in and someone could guess where it is by saying the name of the location or describing it or circling it on a map. So you could say I'm at the Grand Exchange or circle the GE on the world map. You couldn't just say I'm in Varrock or give some really vague answer, it has to be specific. I'd like to make sure a lot of people get some of the prize, but the person who guesses correctly the first time will definitely get more GP than others. There are 5 locations in my post, so you have 5 chances to win some money. I won't give out the answers until the contest ends, so if you're the second person to guess correctly, Directly, you'll still get some money, and so on, depending on how many people participate. And same with the Fashionscape contest, the top three or more people with the most votes will win a significant amount of GP. I will split the money evenly between both contests, so there's 50 mil going to the Fashionscape contest and 50 mil going to the Hide and Seek contest. The Hide and Seek contest starts today and will go until Christmas. I'm sure you guys can figure out the answers to each location before then, but in case there's the location that hasn't been figured out, I can make a new post giving out hints or a less zoomed in image until someone gets it right. And to be clear, you only get part of the prize pool if you guess correctly. So you could be the third person to guess correctly and you could still win some money. Also, I will be recording giving away the money in game, so if for some reason you don't want to be recorded, then let me know. Oh, and one more thing, I'll be streaming Minecraft on Christmas Eve and then Mudkip and I will do a cooking stream on Christmas Day. I streamed Minecraft with Mudkip last year because it was a Christmas gift from my sister and it it was a lot of fun and I haven't really played Minecraft since then, so I thought it'd be fun to do that again this year, so that'll be on my Twitch channel. Here's my favorite clip from last year, Mudkip died and spawned in the original spawn and had to swim all the way back without a boat. Is that you? Is that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
like the sun's in the background. <laughs> this is so dramatic. <laughs> And then on Christmas Day, we'll be cooking and drinking over on Mudkip's Twitch channel. So if you don't have anyone to celebrate Christmas with or don't celebrate it yourself, you can stop by and watch us make some delicious food. Okay, that's all. Sorry this announcement was so long. Now to the actual video. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. So last video, I got 79 runecrafting. I started at like... 67 or something? I forgot what level it was exactly, but I'm sure you can just go back and see if you really care that much. And I finished the Raiments of the Eye outfit, and also happened to get the amulet, which teleports me straight to Guardians of the Rift. And so now I have everything I need for the Falador Elite Diaries, so I just have to like do the tasks. So the thing I need the outfit for is to craft 252 air runes simultaneously. And normally this requires 88 rune crafting, but with the full rune crafting outfit, because you get I think it was 60% more runes with the full outfit, so I can complete this task without 88 rune crafting. Besides that, I think I already have a magic tree planted, but I'll have to check and that'll take a while to like chop it down, but still it's like a pretty easy task. Perform a skill cape or quest cape emote at the top of Falador Castle. Also pretty easy. I do still have the quest cape, thankfully, so I'm able to do that. Mix the Cerebrew and the East Bank. Also easy. The one thing that I'm kind of dreading is to purchase a white 2H sword from Survivin. Because this requires like a certain number KC of Black Knights, and if you've ever done on this task then you know it's a little bit tedious like it's not difficult but it's just kind of annoying because you're just kind of like sitting there for hours killing black knights i guess let me check if i have any cannonballs because that would be nice oh and also something i forgot to do last video was show my rune collection so this is all of the runes i've gotten from guardians of the rift from 200 kc so i definitely have like a lot of earth and fire runes I've gotten quite a bit of blood Blood runes and air runes, even though I usually try to avoid the air altar because it's like the low level one and it doesn't give you a lot of points, but sometimes I end up doing it because the only other option is like the body altar or the mind altar. Those are the two that I really tried to skip completely because like those runes are just useless to me. Plus I feel like a lot of the time it's like way easier to get catalytic points versus elemental points so I kind of try to like get more elemental points because I know if like the blood altar pops up then I get more points from that. Okay I do not have any cannonballs in my bank. I don't think I- I don't even have a cannon. <laughs> First diary task done. I ran out of bank space and I've already like tried my best to clear out as much as I could so I'm just gonna buy more. Cool, now I have 920. At least my bank is still cleaner than Mudkip's because I have way less spaces than him. There's that task done, made the Sarah brew, and there's that task completed. Now on to the last task. So you can check your Black Knight KC in the wanted quest page. Like after completing the quest, there's this little thing at the bottom. So it tells you your KC, but I'm pretty sure you also get like a message in your chat box once you've reached like a certain milestone. So for the white 2H sword, I need 1300 KC and I have 100 right now. I don't know if I actually need food or anything. It's been a while since I did this grind on my main and I don't know if there's like a specific meta to this, but whatever. I'm just gonna be killing them here in Taverly Dungeon because there's a lot of them here. And of course, because they're level 33, they're not aggressive to me so this is gonna be really tedious. I guess I'll see you back later when I have 1300 KC. Okay I am now a white knight master so now
now all I need to do is just buy the white 2H sword just under 2k. Okay, now that's all of the tasks done. Putting the lamp into prayer as usual. So now I have the Falador Shield 4, which when I recharged my prayer, it recharges all of my prayer like from zero. And the tree patch here will never be diseased again, so I won't have to pay for it. And on my main, I have the elite diary done, and sometimes I do farm runs, or sometimes I did farm runs, like after I did the Falador elite diary, and a lot of the time I would still forget <laughs> that I don't have to pay for my patch like be protected but it would like give me a message to say that I don't need to do that so it wouldn't let me like waste items and money basically to protect a patch that is already automatically protected so that's good because I'm really forgetful. I also now have an increased chance at receiving higher level ore when cleaning pay dirt but that doesn't really apply to me because I'm not going back to motherload mine for a long time probably. I probably will go back at some point after getting 99 mining but yeah I'm still doing amethyst to 99. And of course the last elite diary reward is access to the really nice amethyst mining spot and I think first I need to talk to her before I go in there. I'd like to access the cave. Now I have access to the best amethyst mining spot and don't have to compete with as many people. There's like a few people down there apparently, but I could just hop worlds if I really wanted to be completely alone, but I usually just stay in this area and mine like these rocks along the wall. And now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna have to AFK for a while to edit the previous video. Oh and by the way, my goal for this episode, since I guess I didn't really say that, I would like to also get the Arty Elite Diary done. So I'm gonna be doing Giant's Foundry at some point. I do have some ore in my bank from Motherload Mine and I can just go ahead and like smith all of that and be done with it because I'm not going back to Motherload Mine. So my goal is to get 87 smithing but with Giant's Foundry I can like gather up points and buy this drink that boosts your smithing by 4, so I'll be able to boost from 87 to 91 for the Elite Diary. And I also still need 85 magic, but like I'm pretty close to 85, I just need to like get it done. <laughs> so I think at some point I'm probably just gonna go back to Slayer as like an AFK thing. Actually I might just do that right now instead of Amethyst. I mean it's nice being in this spot but I'd like to get set up at Slayer because I kind of miss doing Slayer. So right now I'm on an AVNC task and I was gonna save it so that Mudkip and I could do Armadil together but I don't really see that happening in time soon. I mean we could go but like I feel like there's a lot going on like I have a lot of other goals and then he might want to do like some other bossing or whatever so I'm just gonna cancel it and get a different task. Oh that's a new item. Oh a master clue. Got the casket. At least I got white fire lighters, so I actually like these things, they're fun to use. Just doing skeletal wyverns and I got granite legs, wow. Okay, I guess it's time to finally get started on the smithing grind, so I'm just gonna start with gold ore and of course I still don't have enough coal for all of the other ore that I have, but I'll make it work. Anyways, I'll just get through this and then do giant's foundry. I guess I won't really record anything here, like I'm sure you know how Blast Furnace works. Okay, actually Mudkip reminded me that I can just do my kingdom, so I have it mostly on herbs, but I have the rest on coal, so hopefully that'll be enough. 7k coal, nice. Probably still not enough for the amount of other ore that I have, but still a decent amount. I just started alking some stuff that I had. Not like the armor and metal stuff that I can 
can use in Giant's Foundry. I'm making sure I still have those. So I got almost 2 mil from that, and I also happened to get 85 magic, which is exactly the level that I need for the Arty Elite Diary. Okay, back to smithing. Okay, that's the last of my coal, so I'm gonna move on from Blast Furnace and go to Giant's Foundry. So I have like a lot of bars here that I can use in Giant's Foundry, and I also have like some metal stuff in here. I tried to just like elk items that use like one bar, like the rune daggers and stuff like that, and so everything else in here should be good to use in Giant's Foundry, aside from like dragon items of course since I can't use those in Giant's Foundry. Well, I guess I missed some things, but just ignore that. So I'm 60k away from level 82, but of course I have to get to level 87, but I think this should be enough. There's no calculator on Runelight for Giant's Foundry right now, so it's kind of just calculating, like, if I was using these bars for just like normally smelting them into some metal item, like dart tips is probably what I would be doing if I wasn't doing Giant's Foundry and that would get me to level 84. But I know Mudkip has a lot of leftover bars so even if this doesn't get me to 87 then he'll be able to give me some bars that I can use. But this- I feel like this probably will get me to 87 because Giant's Foundry gives you a lot more XP per bar than just smithing normally. But before I go to Giant's Foundry, I have a little bit of a detour. So today, there's been an update. So from now on, certain quests get more XP rewards than previously. And for people who have already completed the quests, you can go to a certain location, depending on the quest, and get your additional XP. So like from Beneath Cursed Sands, you normally- you previously got 20k agility XP, and now you get 50k agility XP, so I'm gonna get 30k XP from talking to Purdue. So I'm gonna do all of that right now because it's free XP, why would I not? Oh yeah, he just tells you like straight away. Yes, I would like all of my XP. Let's see if I got any levels. 90 fishing, 82 smithing. Oh, I guess that's it. I got a lot of XP, but I only got two levels, but I have some decently high stats, so it makes sense I wouldn't get a lot of levels. Anyway, there is more XP I can claim. Oh, he just gave me four antique lamps. I guess I can put them in anything. I thought normally, I thought before it was like only combat skills or something, but this is nice. There's more options. I'm gonna choose prayer because I hate training prayer. Ooh, I got a level 79 prayer. I guess this one only does combat, so magic. And last one, got some Taibo Wanai teleport scrolls from a hard clue, and now I'm on to Giant's Foundry. I'm just gonna start with bars until I get the hang of it, so I fill this. Okay, that's full. Oh, and also I forgot to mention I'm wearing ice gloves because that's kind of required for this mini game and just graceful even though I probably don't really need it. I I'm just kind of like following a guide. So I ask him for a commission, a broad heavy sword, and now I have to set up the mold. I think I'm just supposed to find one that has like two of the things that are green, but like pick the one that has the higher numbers, I think. There, and now I pour the crucible. Oh yeah, I guess it says up here, cause like this is red, so I have to keep it in the red. I think that's what that means. I guess I broke the sword. Oh no. Okay, this time I'm gonna use low level pars so that I can like get the hang of it first before I start using like the high level bars. I realized what I did wrong last time. I was using the polishing wheel instead of the grindstone. Okay, I finished my first sword. It's not 
great quality, but okay. On to the next one. I think I understand it now, though. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. It's not too bad. I'd say it's much easier than Guardians of the Rift, like learning the mechanics at least. I'm at 61 points right now. I use these points here to buy like the things in the store. You can buy like upgrades for the molds so you get like higher quality stuff and therefore get more points. There's also this colossal blade which I'm pretty sure is just completely cosmetic but it's really cool. And there's the smithing outfit but the main thing that I'm here for right now is Kovac's grog which is 300 points. Points, so it shouldn't take me long to get that considering I've done two correct swords and I already have 61 points. And this is what gives you the plus four smithing boost. So with this I only need 87 smithing, but of course for that I still need five levels. So I'm gonna be here a while. I downloaded this plugin, Easy Giants Foundry, in the plugin hub on Moonlight and it's really nice. I mean, it kind of just like highlights stuff and tells you a few things that you should do. It's not like game changing, but it just makes it a little bit easier. So like it highlights the things that you need to click on and then in here after you get a commission, then it highlights something green if it's something that has like good score or whatever. So it just kind of tells you what you should click on here without having to like look at the numbers and stuff yourself. Another thing I learned is that you should mix bars. So I talked to Mudkip and he told me that I should do 18 mithril bars and 10 addy bars. And I don't remember what plugin this is, but if you shift click in your bank, then you can swap the left click. So I have this one set to 18 because I have the X amount set on 18 and so that's what I set it to and then I have the addy bar set on 10 so I don't have to move from this I just I just click on both of these and I get 18 and then 10 so that's really convenient for me and I'm gonna be honest I don't completely understand how this works with mixing metals but I was told that it's better so I'm gonna do that and then once you have the sword then it highlights the thing that you're supposed to click on so like right now it's a little bit too hot it's supposed to be in the red bar and now this thing is green and then down here it tells you how much heat you have left and how many actions of the current thing that you're doing right now you have left. So it's like a little bit convenient but you can also just like watch the bar instead so it's like if you prefer numbers or if you prefer watching the bar but you can also like go into the plugin and and check off the things that you don't want to have like if you don't want this little thing on the side here then you can just get rid of that. It's very customizable. And yeah, I guess that's all it really does. It kind of just highlights stuff and gives you numbers. Also a little tip that I have to give you if you're new to Giant's Foundry. So the way I remember what each thing needs is the trip hammer is pretty easy to remember because it's just right next to the lava pool and then this the grindstone is right next to the water and the polishing wheel is also next to the water but like I just need to remember that like this thing is closer to the water, this thing is a little bit farther away, so you use the lava for the water and therefore you need to have it like up here on the green bar instead of like down here when you're first starting. That way it cools down. I mean it also just like makes sense that hammering a sword would would cool it down when it's really hot and then the grindstone because it's like fast and it, it, it just grinds the sword so of course it would heat it up and then the polishing wheel is for polishing so of course it would cool it down. I don't know it makes sense in my head at least. Maybe I just watch a lot of videos of people like making the swords and stuff. <laughs> And also I mixed these things at first because the symbols are like kind of similar but they're just like the opposite direction but this one looks a little bit more sparkly and also the polishing wheel is always 
green and the grindstone is always this yellow color so that's fairly easy to remember if you just think about the colors this is orange and that's green because it's usually at the end kind of I don't know I feel like polishing is supposed to be at the end but I guess it makes sense that like Jagex wanted to do like mixtures of things in like different orders so it's a little bit more challenging than just like doing the same like hammering and then using the grindstone and then polishing but I'm pretty sure in real life you would end a sword making process with polishing 95 mining well this video is getting long so I'm gonna end it here I guess I'll just continue giants foundry in the next video so here are my stats here's my character summary tab also a new quest came out so I'm gonna have to get my quest cave back at some point I don't remember exactly what rank we were last video, but we're rank 12 right now, so that's pretty awesome because I know we've been like like 16 or whatever for a while in the past and it seems like we're slowly going up ranks. So remember to check out the giveaway contest if you're interested in either of them. I'll have links to everything in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next video. Goodbye friends!